What's up guys, Lloyd here, and today I'm coming at you with a video analyzing the new upcoming talents from the War Within for Retribution Paladins. We were lucky and we got both of them released in the same day. Uh, today we're gonna be taking a look at Herald of the Sun and Templar Retribution Paladins. All right, let's get into it. So this is my first look at the abilities here. And for starters, we have an ability called Sunspot. So Wake of Ashes causes your next two Holy Power spending abilities to create a Sunspot on your target, dealing radiant damage or healing over eight seconds. And then um, the Sunspots, 10% of the damage and healing radiates to nearby allies or enemies, reduced beyond five targets. So uh, this makes me think that as long as this isn't like some sort of tooltip error, that anyone standing in the path of the Wake of Ashes is also going to get healed as long as they're a friendly player. Um, this reminds me of Truce Wake. So we already have this uh, in the game at the moment. We have something that uh, you know deals, deals radiant damage as a damage over time from Wake of Ashes. So it's interesting to see that now it's gonna cause an additional damage over time um, from your next two Holy Power Spenders. So over here, we have two options. The first choice node, we have Morningstar and Gleaming Rays. So every five seconds, your next Sunspot damage or healing is increased by 5%, stacking up to 10 times. So this means that, um, you know, during the cooldown of Wake of Ashes, your Sunspots, as long as you're not proccing them from one of these other talents here, um, seems like it's going to be Gathering Strength. And then Gleaming Rays, while Sunspot is active, your Holy Power Spenders deal 10% increased additional damage. So during that dot, uh, you're gonna deal increased damage and healing, pretty cool. Uh, now we have Eternal Flame. This makes a return from, I believe, Warlords of Draenor or Mists of Pandaria. Maybe it was, I think maybe it was in both expansions, something like that. So basically, uh, Word of Glory has a healing over time um, and the healing over time is increased by 25% when cast on self. So, um, back in the day, this existed in a time where like spell steal and purge were insane, so it really wasn't super strong. I'll be interested to see if uh, they are planning on having this uh, spell stealable or if there will be dispel protection. Um, if not, then I it's it's definitely going to be like comp dependent. Honestly, I'm thinking about taking this and using it anyway because. At the end of the day, Word of Glory really doesn't do anything. So if we can like push it one time and then kind of fire and forget, that's fantastic. Uh, next we have Luminosity. Uh, for Ret, your critical strike chance of Hammer of Wrath and Divine Storm increased by 10%. Um, in, in Divine Storm increased by 10%. Can't, can't remember if I said that. What, what am I talking about? I was spacing out. All right, so basically use, useless talent if they keep Vengeful Wrath in the game. Um, we are already taking the 100% talent crit and Divine Storm really doesn't hit that hard in PvP. So maybe if um, if they remove Vengeful Wrath or if for some reason we don't really take it in the builds, then this will have some value. But at the moment, this is kind of a, um, a pretty meh talent. All right, moving on, we have Lumine and Will of the Dawn. We um, get some movement speed, I guess. So. Will the Dawn, movement speed increased by 5% while above 80% HP. And then when your health is brought below 30, 35%, your movement speed is increased by 40% for five seconds um, with a minute cooldown. Now, number one thing I see with an issue here is that we're not really cleansing uh, slows and stuns. So low percentage movement speed increases are kind of useless unless we um, see a return of a talent like Emancipate. Um, but we'll be interesting to see uh, if this is really impactful or not. And then we have Illumine. Uh, sunspots reduce the movement speed of enemies by 50% and increase the move speed of allies by 20%. So that's pretty neat to see. Um, by allies, that usually includes yourself as well in there. So we get a nice little 20% movement speed increase and an actual slow, a 50% slow, rather than a 30 or 20%, whatever judgment is right now. It's very, very low. Next up, we have Eternal Sun right here. Sunspot's duration is increased by two seconds and Eternal Flame uh, duration is increased by three seconds. Pretty cool. Um, I guess that would maybe not really synergize with Morning Star because then, let me think about this. Yeah, I'm not really sure how these would synergize that well since on one hand you want to stack as many like Sunspots as you can 
without or, or, or like have as long of a duration, at least in PvP I'm thinking about. Because like if you're going to maximize your sunspots, you're going to want to try to not really proc them for about 50 seconds, it looks like. To have like that ultimate 50% increase um, sunspot. So I'm, I'm not really sure how these will synergize, uh, but we'll see. And then we have lingering radiant sunspots leave an eternal flame for 12 seconds on allies or a greater judgment on enemies when they expire or are extended. So great, passive healing. Um, we like that, kind of nice. I wonder if Wake of Ashes, when it leaves the sunspot, if it would, or, or like when a final verdict leaves the sunspot, I wonder if that somehow applies to yourself as well, or if that has to come from like a word of glory sunspot, because it says your next two holy power spending abilities so I'm assuming like you were to glory, you cause a friendly sunspot and then you final verdict and you cause a damaging sunspot. I'm assuming it's like that. Uh, and then we have Sunseer here. Holy Shock and Light of Dawn, Critical Strikes. Oh wait, I'm sorry. That's Holy. Um, Hammer of Wrath and Divine Storm, Critical Strikes cause the target to burn for an additional radiant damage over four seconds. All right, cool. So this has pretty good synergy with the Vengeful Wrath. Uh, am I even saying that right? It's, it's the talent that gives Hammer of Wrath a 100% crit uh, chance. That's That used to be what it was called. I'm not sure if that's what it's currently called, but basically the Hammer of Wrath crit talent, this would have massive synergy with that. Pretty cool, additional free damage, we like that. Uh, Aurora, after you cast Wake of Ashes, gain Divine Purpose. Wow, that's awesome, I love that. Um, I love Divine Purpose, I love procs. Um, so basically, instead of generating like three Holy Power, you're basically generating six holy power with wake of ashes because you get the three uh, initial holy power and then you get one free usage to use on either word of glory eternal flame final verdict divine storm etc etc so pretty cool and then we have solar grace your haste is increased by four percent for 12 seconds uh each time you apply a sunspot multiple stacks may overlap all right so we get a a um a haste steroid right here so maybe we don't have to take crusade if they buff the uh, original wings in pvp pretty nice and then we have <clears throat> second sunrise hammer of wrath and divine storm have a 15 percent chance to cast again at 30 percent effectiveness um that seems i mean okay that seems nice so rng extra damage kind of an interesting um way to proc damage here. We're, we're throwing more damage into Hammer of Wrath, but that's fine. Uh, it's a generator. I'm not sure what they think of this talent. It's like a like an Echo's talent. I know Divine Storm already kind of has this in the tree. I don't use it because it's a PvP talent, but you get that like second Divine Storm that, that jumps forward and it's a second time. I mean, hmm. Interesting talent. All right. Uh, moving on here, we have Sun's Avatar. During Avenging Wrath, you become linked to your sun spots, causing radiant damage to enemies or healing to allies that pass through the beams reduced beyond five targets. Activating Avenging Wrath applies four sun spots onto nearby allies or enemies and increases sunspots damage and healing by 20%. All right, so we have a massive steroid for sunspots. So we're going to have two ways to proc sunspots. We have, um, we have Wake of Ashes empowered... Uh, empowering two holy power spenders and then we have it looks like avenging wrath or crusade proccing these sunspots onto targets here so pretty cool it looks like we're gonna want to that's interesting because it, it, it seems like we're gonna want to stagger crusade or, or avenging wrath and wake of ashes which currently you use them together because you, you might overlap. Like, I'm not sure if this is going to overlap the sunspots or maybe you can have multiple sunspots stacked on one target. Um, it depends because you could get into a situation where you pop wings with three holy power, you use a spender, and then you have a sunspot on the target. And then now you don't want to like wake of ashes or, or other way around. You like wake of ashes first. And then now you have the sp sunspot sticking down on the taking down on the target and you don't want to pop wings because you don't want to accidentally re like overwrite your current sunspot. Uh, it, it's weird. I'd have to play test to see how this works, but overall I rate this tree like uh, like in seven out of 10 in terms of interesting gameplay. Um, I think I really like this talent Aurora. And I also, um, let's see here. I like, 
maybe Aurora, Solar Grace, and the two Capstone Talents, or the initial talent and the Capstone Talent here. So I like these. The uh, the other ones are odd. Like there's some synergy here with Sunseer, but again, that's just passive, no thinking damage. Second Sunrise, a little bit of passive, no thinking damage. Uh, Luminosity, I think would probably need to be rethought if they're keeping Ventral Wrath in the uh, in the game here. Um, the the Hammer of Wrath crit talent. And then Eternal Flame, obviously it depends on how it's balanced around, but this could be really good. I, I do like I do like the return, the idea of the return of Eternal Flame. It's pretty cool. All right, next up we have the Templar Paladin. All right, so the first ability here, we have Light's Guidance. For Retribution, Wake of Ashes is replaced with Hammer of Light for 12 seconds after it is cast. So it looks like we get a, a new active ability after casting Wake of Ashes. A hammer down your enemies with the power of light dealing holy damage to the target and up to four nearby enemies so it looks like it's going to be like another aoe strike uh, i just wonder if it is targeted or if it's like kind of um hitbox related like wake of ashes so additionally calls down empyrean hammers from the sky to strike three nearby enemies for holy damage costs five holy power interesting so I wonder how many usages we get after using Wake of Ashes. Um, is it the entire 12 seconds? So we try and hit as many uh, Hammer of Lights in that 12 second window as we can, costing five Holy Power, or is it, you know, for 12 seconds after you can cast this ability one time? Uh, could be interesting to see. Reminds me a little bit of um, Vanguard of Justice, how we add one holy power to our holy power spenders and increase the damage so um, this is going to be interesting how it's how this is tuned all right first up we have templar's watch hammer of hammer of light and wake of ashes deal 30 percent increased damage when striking only one enemy uh-oh uh-oh pvp one shots incoming uh and for whom the bell tolls divine toll grants up to 100 percent increased damage on your next three judgments when striking only one enemy. This amount is reduced by 20% for each additional target struck. All right, so we get a little bit more single target damage with Divine Toll, or at least a buff from Divine Toll. Interesting. Uh, both of these look like they could be interesting. Um, they'll be stronger in 2v2 than 3v3 and stronger against uh, classes without pets, but honestly, like these could be pretty strong. Maybe... Um, anything that like I see that you know it's just a giant increase in steroids sometimes I get wor wor worried about one shots or the difficulty in balancing the talents but um, could be cool shake the heavens here after casting hammer of light you call down an empyrean hammer on a nearby target every two seconds for eight seconds so you get a little bit more extra aoe damage after using the uh, hammer of light cool cool and then we have empyrean hammer when Empyrean Hammer critically strikes, 60% of its damage is dealt to nearby enemies. And then enemies hit by this effect deal 5% reduced damage to you for 8 seconds. Alright, so it looks like Light's Guidance and Hammer of Light could just be some some giant... Or I guess it's just called Hammer of Light. Uh, they could just be some gigantic AoE type of burst. Um, since like all this stuff is about... AoE. I guess this side is more based around single target and this side, these two uh, AoE. So I guess we'll see how it plays out in um, the War Within Alpha. Sorry, I just had a cough. Uh, next up here, we have Retribution uh, Sacrosanct Crusade. When you cast Wake of Ashes, gain Shield of Vengeance at 10% effectiveness. That seems pretty weak. 10% uh, effectiveness is like almost nothing. So we're really going to gloss over that. This depends on how it's balanced. Uh, next up, we have Higher Calling. Crusader Strike, Hammer of Wrath, Blade of Justice. Extend the duration of Shake the Heavens by one second. What is Shake the Heavens here? After casting Hammer of Light, you call down an Empyrean Hammer on a nearby target every two seconds for eight seconds. Okay, so more Empyrean Hammers coming down from the sky here, like your Hammer of Lights. Okay, okay, cool, cool. So we can... Looks like after, if we take this talent, after casting our Hammer of Light, we call down those Empyrean Hammers and they call them down like every couple of seconds. So this is basically what I gathered from this Shake the Heavens, it's like Divine Resonance. And then 
Higher calling extends the duration of divine resonance. So we're shooting out more little things. Uh, next up here, we have Bond of Fellowship. You receive 20% less damage from Blessing of Sacrifice, and each time its target takes damage, you gain 4% move speed up to a maximum of 40%. That's actually awesome, because you're using Blessing of Sacrifice in PvP all the time. Uh, so you're going to get a little bit more benefits from it. Nice, nice. And then Unrelenting Charger, Divine Seed lasts 2 seconds longer and increases your move speed by an additional 30% for the first 3 seconds. Very weird that we have Unrelenting Charger as a talent here. Uh, I feel like we kind of already have that in the Paladin Tree baseline. If anything, I feel like Unrelenting Charger should be a, a freedom on Steed. Um, I don't like the two seconds longer because Steed is useless when you're slowed. And I don't like the increased initial 30% for the first three seconds because, again, when, you know it slows. So you always have to add your freedom to your, your Steed. So Unrelenting Charger... Could be cool if they made it so steed broke roots and slows that would be awesome maybe not even provide immunity maybe just it's a root break or a slow break initially on cast <clears throat> i could i could uh i like that you know i can mess with that but unrelenting charger as is uh probably would not be taken um in in you know competitive content maybe in bgs and stuff it could be useful all right, next up we have Endless Wrath. Calling down an Empyrean Hammer has a 10% chance to reset the cooldown of Hammer of Wrath and make it usable on any target regardless of health. All right, we, this is literally what Final Verdict already does. So I wonder if they're removing that proc from Final Verdict. Huh. All right. Um... Hmm. I don't think I like that talent that this we already have like verbatim that as a talent just it's just naturally baseline built into final verdict all right next up we have sanctification casting judgment increases the damage of empyrean hammer by 10 percent for 10 seconds multiple applications may overlap all right so we will just be defaulting into sanctification if I had to take a guess um granted you know who knows maybe they do end up removing that passive portion of final verdict and baking into endless wrath which, in which case, you know, maybe we would take Endless Wrath. But actually, if Empyrean Hammer is doing a lot of damage or cleaving a lot, I, I could imagine Sanctification being pretty decent, um, increasing the damage by 10% and allowing overlapping application. So the way that I interpret this, we either are increasing the duration, so maybe you like double judgment and now it's 10% for 20 seconds, or maybe it's 20% for 10 seconds, who knows? Uh, we'll have to play test to see how this functions. Next up, we have Hammerfall. Templar's Verdict and Divine Storm call down an Empyrean Hammer on a nearby enemy. While Shake the Heavens is active, this effect calls down an additional Empyrean Hammer. All right, so honestly, so far, what I'm seeing is this middle tree here, pending, you know, Empyrean Hammer actually does something. This middle tree could be insane. Uh, we, get an, we get a Divine Resonance version of Hammer of Light. We can increase the duration of the Hammer of Light procs. And then now we get guaranteed procs and the guaranteed procs increase, they synergize with both uh, Hammer of Light and these two talents right here. So if we just go like right down the middle, these three talents are, are looking pretty nice and relatively easy to balance and kind of interact with your gameplay. So like this middle tree here, I, I find uh, it checks all my, all my marks. All right, over here we have Undisputed Ruling. Hammer of Light applies judgment to its targets and increases your haste by 15% for 6 seconds. What? There's like no way this stays at 15% for 6 seconds because this talent is actually crazy. So every... I mean, I'm probably... Maybe I'm interpreting this wrong, but in theory with Hammerfall... For Retribution's Hammerfall, we just always have 15% more haste because we are calling down the... Uh... Oh, wait, I am misinterpreting it. There's a second part here. I'm thinking of Empyrean Hammers. This is this is your Hammer of Light. All right, all right, all right. So it's really only on the initial cast of Light's Guidance or, or Hammer of Light, whatever you want to call it here, um, that you get the 15% increase haste. Okay, that seems a little more balanced. I thought it was going to be every proc of Empyrean Hammer.
but it's just the, uh, the initial cast of this ability here. Um, which actually, by the way, if we go back to the beginning of what I was talking about with this ability, like, is it a one time use for 12 seconds? Or can you spam it as much as you can generate five holy power during that 12 seconds? If, for example, it is that second, second scenario where you can use it as many times as you can generate five holy power for 12 seconds, then this talent is actually really strong. 50% haste for six seconds is going to allow you to get more of these hammer of lights off during that duration. And I'm assuming if they're going to balance this correctly, hammer of light is going to have to hit harder than final verdict. That's pretty cool. Um, and then lastly here, we have lights deliverance. You gain a stack of lights deliverance when you call down an Empyrean hammer. And Empyrean hammer, just to reiterate, is that second little proc from the hammer of light. So, uh, so each time you call down that hammer at 50 stacks, gaining a hammer of light empowers you for 12 seconds to cast hammer of light an additional time for free. All right, pretty cool. Honestly, overall, I give this one like an 8.5 out of 10. The only questions I have are uh, about Endless Wrath. We literally already have that verbatim in the game. Not sure if that is just a placeholder talent. And then uh, Sacrosanct Crusade. This seems like it would need to be balanced a little bit better. 10% is really, really weak, especially when you compare this to some of the other defensive talents that some classes are getting in their DPS trees, uh, which I'm not going to go over in this video, but some of them are insane. Like the Warlock ones, of course, Warlock's getting more tankiness. Um, and then this talent here, Temple as a Watch, and for whom the bells toll, uh, anything that is just like a gigantic steroid for single target makes for sometimes unhealthy gameplay in PvP. Uh, but we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm pretty I'm pretty positive overall with both these trees here. Again, this is literally pre-alpha, the first iteration of the trees we get to look at. If I have to, um, you know, to have one positive takeaway, the middle. In the bottom of this Templar tree synergizes so well and seems like it could provide for some pretty interesting gameplay, so, which is why I uh, I rate the Templar Paladin a little bit higher than the Herald of the Sun Paladin. Like some of these obviously have some synergies here, but it's just, they're just questionable. Like, you know, Morningstar and PvP, are we going to really want to wait for max stacks of Morningstar before we like really just go ham with our sunspots or... Is it going to be like a fire and forget scenario where sometimes you're going to have max stacks and sometimes you're not? Um, but yeah, overall, both of these trees looking pretty solid. And uh, recently I started playing almost every class in the game uh, in Dragonflight. So I'll be evaluating the other trees as we get there. All right. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on the upcoming Paladin uh, War Within Talents, Hero Talents rather. And I will see you all next time. Peace.